Okay, for section 10.4, we're going to be talking about areas and circumferences of sh different shapes that we know. <clears throat> we're going to start with the area of a rectangle and the area of a square. Of course, we know from our previous math classes, the area of a rectangle is always going to be given by the length times the width, and that gives us an amount of area, amount of space taken up by this particular rectangle. <clears throat> when we have a square, both the length and the width are the same length, so we generally call it S, standing for side length, and ultimately S times S, the same reason we would denote that as S squared. Okay, so area of a triangle, or excuse me, area of a rectangle, area of a square. Uh, one of the things that we do that often in geometry though is we find areas of shapes that are not necessarily just squares or rectangles. Okay? Um, a shape like this, for instance, doesn't have a formula necessarily, but the general strategy here would be to break this up into two different parts. Okay? If we know this one is a 3 by 13 rectangle, okay, we know that this is a 3 by, and keep in mind that 6 just goes to here, but we also know that that's 3, so this is really a 9 by 3. So if we take the two individual areas and we calculate them separately and then add them together, and then we can figure out the area of the entire shape. Uh, one thing very important here, like uh, in all the problems we've been doing here, is that we have units. Make sure we understand that area is always measured in square units. So we're multiplying feet times feet. When we do the area calculation, feet times feet it equals feet squared. Okay. All right. We also have a parallelogram that we've dealt with. The area of a parallelogram formula is base times height. Now keep in mind that when we have a parallelogram, the height and the base need to be perpendicular to each other. So if we were given a shape that looked, say, like this, and we knew this was 5 and that was 4, it wouldn't be enough to say just 5 times 4 because this 4 is not the height. The height would be that measure there that's perpendicular to the base. Okay? So on the next slide, we have a base of 8. We have a height of 4, so in this case, yes, we can multiply the 8 times 4 and get 32 square centimeters. Okay. We also have a means to find the formula for the area of a triangle. A triangle is always going to be 1 half times base times height. We have a base here, height, of course, again, needs to be perpendicular to the base. Okay. And if we know those two pieces of information, even if there's extraneous information like the 10.5 and the 14, all we need here is the 16 and the 10. Those are the base and the height. The height is always going to be perpendicular to the base, as I mentioned. And if we do the math on that, 1 half times 16 times 10 is going to give me 80. And of course, the units are meters for the length, so the area would be meters squared. Okay, we also have a trapezoid that we've worked with. And in this particular case, when we have a trapezoid, trapezoid is always going to have three parts that we're going to look for here. We're going to have a height, which is going to be the distance between the two parallel sides. And then we're going to have the two bases. The bases are going to be the lengths of the two parallel sides. Okay, so remember in a parallelogram, there's always one set of parallel sides. Okay, the bases are always going to be the two lengths of those parallel sides. Okay, the height is always going to be the distance between the two parallel sides. So if we know those three pieces of information, then we can certainly find the area of a trapezoid as illustrated on this slide. And we have the parallel side 32 parallel side 46 and we have the distance between them 13 do not need the 17 or the 19 in this case and we just need the three as I mentioned 13 46 and 32 the two parallel sides are the two bases the distance between them is the height and if we plug it in and do the math properly we get 507 feet squared okay. all right so the other shape that we're going to discuss today is a circle we know a circle is a set of points in a plane equally distant from a given point, which is center. And the radius is a line segment from the center to any point on the circle. All radii in a given circle are the same length. So we know that if we have a center of a circle, if we draw a line to the outside of the circle, that is the radius. And we have a diameter of a circle. A diameter is going to be the distance from one point to another on the circle going through the center. Okay, that distance right there we call D. That's our diameter, and from that we know that 2 times r is equal to d. So 2 times the radius is always going to be the diameter of a circle. Now if we want the <coughs> distance around the circle, we call that the circumference. Okay? The distance around the circle, if it has a diameter of 40 yards, we can use the formula c equals pi d. Now <coughs> if they do not tell you to round it, then leave your answer as 40 pi yards. 
Okay, if they tell you to round it, then round it to whatever decimal place is, uh, is indicated. But in general, we leave circumferences in terms of pi. So we'll leave it as 40 pi yards. And notice it's a distance here, so it's not yards squared, it's just yards. Okay. Whereas, if we want to find the <coughs> radius, or excuse me, the uh, area of that circle, the area formula for a circle is going to be pi times r squared. Now we might say, well, in this one we don't have r. Well, we do have r. We have the diameter, but each radius then would be 20 because we know that the radius would be half of the diameter. So if we did pi times 20 squared, we'd get 400 pi. Okay, 400 pi, that is. And it would be yard squared in this case. So this particular circle would have a circumference of 40 pi yards and an area of 400 pi yard squared. And again, don't do anything with this with your calculator unless they tell you to give it as a decimal. Okay, one other problem here we're going to do with areas here. We want to know which is a better buy. We got a large pizza, 16 inch diameter, it's $15. We got a medium pizza that's 8 inch for $7.50. So ultimately, we want to know the better buy is the one with the lower price per square inch. Okay, the radius of the large pizza is 8, the medium pizza is 4. So if we find the area of the large pizza, it's about 201 inches squared. The medium pizza, the area is about 50 inches squared. Okay, and again, we're looking for the better buy, so we're looking for the lowest price per square inch, price divided by square inches. So if we take the price of the <coughs> big pizza divided by the number of square inches in the big pizza, we end up with 0 0.07 to the nearest cent. So it's 7 cents per square inch. Whereas the smaller pizza, the medium size, 750 divided by 50, is 0.15 inches squared. So which is the better buy? Well, of course, the bigger one is the better buy. It's only 7 cents per square inch, whereas this one is 15 cents. 15 cents per square inch.